Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, Alleluia. The word of God we want to consider today is our gospel reading for this past Sunday, the beginning of that reading from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 44. Luke writes, While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. My dear friends in Christ, that first Easter Sunday must have been a little bit of a busy day for our Savior. He rose from the dead. He appeared to Mary Magdalene and other women at the tomb. And, and then he, that afternoon, appeared to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. He hid his identity from them so that he could explain to them what the scriptures were all about, what he had to do to be the Savior. And sometime along the day, he appeared to the Apostle Peter and, well, it says in our reading that those disciples, they were talking about this, all of those different appearances, especially that appearance probably of those to those two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And then, here it is, it's Easter Sunday evening, and Jesus appears to the disciples in that locked room, and he says to them, peace be with you. When the disciples saw Jesus like that, though, Luke says they were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. The Greek word that's used there for frightened it's not a word that means that they were just a little bit afraid. Actually, that word means that they were absolutely terrified. And normally when we think about the Easter season, we think about the, the emotion that especially is associated with Easter as being that of the Easter joy. That being the dominant emotion, but there's value in seeing that the, um, the atmosphere that day for those disciples was charged with some, some fear and even terror. But what we can see today is that that was an unnecessary fear. That fear, it began with the Roman soldiers on Easter Sunday morning when the angel came and rolled the stone away from the empty tomb because Christ had, had risen. Matthew says, the guards were so afraid of the angel that they shook and became like dead men. Shortly after that, the women came to the tomb and they saw two angels who told them that Jesus was alive, that he had risen from the dead. Mark says, trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. And even though the reports kept coming in about Jesus having risen, about people having seen Jesus, even though that was the case here on Easter Sunday evening, John reports the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews. They were afraid, and Jesus' appearance further intensified their fear. 
an unnecessary fear though, of course, except maybe for the soldiers. The soldiers, they maybe had an appropriate fear because they didn't know Jesus as the, the Savior. Well, Jesus asked the disciples that evening, why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? It was an unnecessary fear that they were exhibiting at this point. Jesus' familiar sounding voice to the disciples, well, what it did, it began to calm their fears, but, but at the same time, Jesus' voice to them was a little bit of a rebuke. Mark says, he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. It's unlikely that Jesus thundered at them in anger, but he was, as it says, a bit disappointed in them. His rebuke maybe was just a little bit louder than a whisper as he showed them not his wrath, but his disappointment. And then what happened is that the terror that they had been feeling when, the terror that they had been feeling in their hearts when Jesus first appeared, it kind of melted into a fear that often follows a guilty conscience. A guilty conscience with knowing that those disciples, what they had done is they had let Jesus down as, as we so often in our lives as well, but they had let Jesus down. After all, before he was crucified, he had told them repeatedly what was going to happen. Before he was betrayed, he had said to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. But they didn't. Luke says, they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement. At that point in time, they were all doubting Thomases. Well, there was an elderly man who was going to go on his first airplane ride. Only thing is, is that he was anxious about that ride and didn't really trust the airplane. Because his friends knew that he was anxious about the ride, they were very careful very anxious to also stay in touch with him to see how he did with his first ride on the airplane. When asked if he enjoyed the flight, he said to them, it wasn't as bad as I thought it might be, but I'll tell you this, I never did put all my weight down. And see now, that's how the disciples and all of us sometimes take the promises of the Bible. Oh, we believe that Jesus is our Savior, that he paid for our sins, and that we're ultimately going to heaven, at least we work on that. And, and anyway, we, we, we know those promises of God, we can hear that, but sometimes we struggle with taking God at his word when he tells us, that he's always in control, that he's always making all things in our lives work together for our eternal good. But see now, from the time that Jesus was arrested until he was arisen, and really for always, Jesus is in control. He never lost control. He was doing just what he needed to do in order to pay for our sins in order to win for us eternal salvation. And now that's what he was saying to those disciples, that they could have just kept on trusting in him. Likewise for us, when, when trials or troubles would come the way, our way in the course of our lives, what Satan wants us to do is he wants us to doubt that God is in control, that he knows what he's doing, he wants us to think that God has abandoned us as the disciples, as they felt abandoned when Jesus died on the cross. But especially in times of trouble, instead of thinking that God has abandoned us, instead of us abandoning God because of our 
thoughts that he's abandoned us. What we'll want to do is we'll think of that man on the plane and put all our weight down and trust our Savior completely. As the hymn writer says, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. See, there's no reason for us, as there was for those disciples, to be filled with this unnecessary fear. And why is that? Because we have our Savior saying to us, peace be with you. And that means the peace of knowing our sins are forgiven, that we're going to heaven. Peace be with you. Why be afraid? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, there are many things in this life, like COVID-19 and, and all the problems and troubles we face in this life that could tend to make us afraid. That's all unnecessary fear, though, because you say to us, peace be with you. Thank you for your comforting words and thank you for paying for our sins, which means that through faith in you, we really do have nothing to fear. We pray in your name, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.